We got the ball first. We're gonna take the old man kick off to the house. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Delaware State University Hornet fans. It is homecoming 2015 here on the beautiful campus of Delaware State University here at Alumni Stadium for a MEAC showdown between the South Carolina State Bulldogs and your Delaware State University Hornets. Once again, joined alongside Derek Slade and the rest of the crew. My name is Byron Dixon. As I said, it is homecoming today. The Hornets come into this game 0-6, looking for their first win, 0-3 in the MEAC. And the South Carolina State Bulldogs come in here at 3-3, three 2-1 three, in the MEAC. I'm going to go ahead straight over to my broadcast partner, Derek Slayton, with his keys to the game and his impact players. Derek, what do you have for the people today? Uh, for Delaware State University on offense, it has to be Jamil Jackson. Had two touchdowns last week in a loss against Florida A&M. He still has struggled. But that was a bright sign to see him being able to get into the end zone a couple of times. He's only averaging 3.1 rushes, rushing yards per per carry. But if the Hornets are going to have any type of shot, it's going to be because he can run effectively and get into the end zone. On the defensive side is Malik Harris. He leads the MEAC in tackles with 65, and he's also fourth in the MEAC for tackles for losses. He'll have his hands full with the offensive impact player for South Carolina State, which is Jalen Simmons, who averages over – Six yards a carry and 400 yards so far in the season in only five games. And for the defense for South Carolina State, it's a player, preseason player of the year. Javon Hargrave had six sacks one season, last season against Bethune Cookman alone, which is one of the best teams in the MEAC. He's a disruptor. He, he's a, he just gets to the quarterback very well. He'll bring a lot of pressure to Gilbert Rivera today. Thank you for that, Derek. Hornets will receive the opening kickoff here today. Eric Scott back deep alongside Bryson Allen. And the Hornets will have an opportunity to put some points on the board first and try to get this crowd into the game as it is homecoming. Have alumni in the building with current students as well. Always a good sight to see. So, ladies and gentlemen, get ready for kickoff as your Hornets will have the ball first. Short kick. Taken by Golson. Golson runs to his right, cuts up field, and will get about the 20-yard line as the Hornets will have that first possession of the day. Well, Derek, quarterback is Gilbert Rivera again. Sayo Bado found himself injured again. What do you look for from Rivera today, especially with this opening drive? He has to take care of the ball. He's facing the best passing defensive team in the MEAC in South Carolina State. Their defense is very stingy, but not just that. They force a lot of turnovers. They had two pick sixes last week, and Gilbert Rivera threw a pick six of his own against Florida A&M. So he has to be very careful with his, with his decision making. Hornets look like they're going to come out in the gun. Two receivers to Rivera's right. Eric Scott at the bottom of your screen. Jamal Jackson had a great game last week in the backfield. Goes to Rivera. Rivera's going to throw. He's going to take a shot. Has a man, and he overthrew him. That was pass was actually going to be intended for Kamal Abrams. That wasn't a bad play call, but just missed execution there. Yeah, he has to put a little bit more air under that ball, let him run under and catch it. But those are the opportunities they have to make. They are not a good team in terms of long possessions. The only time they really have had a lot of success is when they've hit some passes deep. You have to be able to hit that one. That's a touchdown if he puts it on them. That's definitely a big gain at least. And the Hornets will come out in the pistol here. Jamal Jackson behind Rivera. South Carolina State brings pressure. Here it comes. Jackson runs right. Gets a gain of about two as he's bought down immediately by Chris Pauling. Well, Derek, they go back to Jamal Jackson. Had a great game last week. He definitely did, and he's going to have to be very good for the Hornets to have any chance. He has been off to a slow start, so you hope that two-touchdown game gave him in the offensive line some confidence. But good tackle by Chris Pauling. A cornerback came on a pressure to bring the tackle down. Third down and eight, 14-20 remaining. Rivera and the gun, South Carolina State. Looks like they're going to try to bring some pressure, but they may be toying with the mind of Rivera here. So Rivera goes to the line and change the play. Figure out the protection. Three receivers to his right. It's going to be a draw. Handed off up the middle. And that's going to be a gain of about two yards. And it looks like that was going to be not Jackson on the carry. Oh, Dayon Chong, excuse me. So Derek, third and eight, they go conservative and run the ball. 
I, and I have nothing against that. Once we said this is South Carolina State defense is very stingy. You have a backup quarterback. You don't want to throw an interception here that can change the game already. The Hornets have a good defense themselves, so punt it away. Have your defense get the ball back. And the Hornets special teams <laughs> as McGee will punt deep. And they have to watch out for number 13, Antonio Hamilton. He's a game breaker, Derek. And yeah, they fumbled the snap. And just like that, South Carolina State is on the board in the blink of an eye. Tevin Richard on a fumble recovery. Not as dramatic as the Michigan State-Michigan uh, return, but just like that, South yeah, Carolina State on the board. That's, we weren't able to get to our keys to the game, but normally we put special teams. As you know, for the last two years, special teams has always been an issue, and there is a situation right there already 7-0 in the blink of an eye. Well, that's definitely not how you want to start the game for the Hornets. <laughs> and it looks like the extra point is going to be no good. As the Hornets did a good job, may have gotten a piece of it. And it'll be 6 nothing. South Carolina State, but still a big miscue early on, 13-25 remaining. Well, Derek, what do you do now as a team? You already come out, fired up homecoming, and you give them six points just like that. Yeah, and everybody's pretty stunned. You didn't even see a, hear a reaction from the crowd. It just happened so quickly. And, um, yeah, that's definitely something that just takes all the air out of a homecoming crowd. But um, that was just not what you want for a beginning to start the game off like that. Like you said, it happened so fast. Kind of didn't see it coming. Lost the snap, and it's recovered for a touchdown. It doesn't get much easier than that, especially punting in the shadow of your own end zone. Special teams, Derek, like you said, we don't really talk about it as much because it's kind of an underlying thing. We know what's going to happen, but you kind of want to avoid it. It's yes. kind of like, you know, going to meet your girlfriend's parents or something. You don't really want to go, but you know it's coming. You know going to happen. So, basically, yes. we always have special teams listed on our keys to the game, and you can see why. It's just always been a little sloppy for some reason. I don't understand it, but they're going to have to get that fixed. That was the easiest touchdown for Tevin Richard in his career. He just grabbed the football, and Deion Sanders' primetime celebration into the end zone. Well, Hornets will get another crack at it on offense. Allen and Golson are deep. As the first quarter is just underway, 13-25 remaining. Kick goes to about the 10-yard line. Golson gets it again. Golson runs right, has some blockers in front of him. He's going to cut up field, has some space, loses the ball, catches it, and actually gets up to about <laughs> wow, Derek. I don't know what else to say about that. That was just a fortunate play, I guess. He's lucky he's a receiver and not a corner that would have dropped it. He just good return, though. Hold on. Hornets will get the ball at the 43, first and 10, and almost at midfield, so I guess a positive there. Exactly. That's the type of thing that can spark your team. They have to take advantage here with this good field position to get something on the board. Rivera will have a second opportunity with the rest of this offense, and the gun, a bunch, a bunch of trio receivers to his left. Something you don't see often from the Hornets. South Carolina State will bring pressure, fakes it, throws it to Scott. Scott had 12 catches last week, gets his first of the day, but no gain there. And that play is pretty predictable when you have basically three receivers stacked up to each other. You know if two of them were blockers. I don't like that they went with the screen there. I thought we were going to get something more creative. And South Carolina State wasn't full with that one. And a loss of two. So definitely not what you want to do if you get a good kick return. And the Hornets will give it another crack here. Air Scott in motion. And it looks like the Hornets come out in the pistol. And now you'll see the three receivers come to Rivera's right. Looks like we had some movement up front, might, and it'll be a false start. I think it might have been 79 who jumped. We're going to get a look at that uh, kick return on the replay here, Derek, as we get a false start on the field. And basically they kicked it forward to the right again, and they just had a block set up all the way to the left, which just allowed them to get up the middle, and he takes it up for 43 yards. Good design on that kick return there. Tough break for the Hornets. You get the good kick return. You lose two yards, then you get a penalty. Now second and 17. Allen in motion. Snap is a little high. Rivera gets it. Has nowhere to go. Keeps his eyes downfield. He's going to throw it to Scott, but it looks like it went to Golson, and that's going to be incomplete. So to set up a third and long third and 17 at the 36-yard line at 12 minutes remaining, Dirk. 
And those are one of those decisions where you're throwing into traffic that you do not want to do. He had some running room in front of him. Get to four or five yards and live another day, but took a very dangerous shot on that last play. Once again, third, 17. Chung in the backfield with Rivera. Four of our receivers. And South Carolina State may look to bring some pressure here on this third and long. Pressure comes. They drop a few back. And he is going to go down. Gilbert Rivera is gobbled up there. And that's the guy we were talking sack. about. Jason and there's Hargrove one of your the impact time. players there. Javon there. Hargrove just, you can't block him with one person. He was a preseason player of the year for a reason. You have to double team him. They did not. And it was an easy result. It's kind of like he ran right up the A gap and was virtually untouched. But as big as you are like that, it doesn't feel good when, you know, you get touched. So you got right to court. Yes, he's so talented. He had five scouts at his game last week to come watch him play. He's extremely talented. And you just seen quick move, quick hands, and another bad play on a special team. And that punt looked like it was partially blocked. It'll go right to midfield. South Carolina State will have great field position when they get the ball on offense for the first time. And Tevin Richard, again, is making an impact. He just had a piece of that one. He was the guy who returned the first one for a touchdown. So he's making some big plays in the special team game. But if you look at the Hornets, they started on the 43-yard line. Now the ball is at the 50. That's seven yards. And two of their first plays was a negative two-yard pass and a penalty. Exactly. So it kind of sucks exactly. looking at how they started this game. It's not a good way to start the game. And actually, they moved the ball further up back to the – 42 is think where they're going to place it at. So they went minus one yards back. And that's now a great field position for South Carolina State. Well, Derek, talk a little bit about special teams. Why are there so many lapses, you think, with the special teams you know, we've seen um, over the past few years? Part of it has to do with just who you have back there. Sometimes you're having your backups there, and if you don't have the depth or the talent, then you have those type of results. Because it's been different players these last two, three years, but it's all been the same results. So it's, it's hard to pinpoint it. It's very hard to decide who's making the mistakes, but it's not looking good for the Hornets so far. Well, South Carolina State will have the ball at the 42, so they're going to actually spot it where it was touched, I believe, and it'll actually be closer to scoring position for the Bulldogs, and it'll be first and 10 with 11.29 remaining. So what are you looking for for South Carolina State? Their offense, they have some playmakers as well. Yeah, Caleb York is a terrific quarterback, but this is a team so far that likes to run and get – run the ball and then set up the pass and Jalen Simmons like we said six yards per carry dangerous running back they alternate three four guys this is a ground and pound team well we'll get a look at their freshman quarterback Caleb York 6'1 freshman been playing well he actually overtook a junior and asked to say something about him he gets his first snap is going to hand it off to number 40 and he is swallowed up actually goes to Dondre Brown and he swallowed up immediately on that play by number 50, Jacob Tizzer. So good stop there by the defense. Yeah, and the Hornets have a good defensive line. They have a good front seven, and uh, they should be able to compete against this running game. Second down, 13 to go, 11 minutes. Man in motion, that's going to be Jalen Simmons. Fakes to Simmons. York keeps it, throws it, knocked away. Good defense there. By the Hornets, and that ball is knocked away by Turk Coaston. Derek, there you go. Yeah, that's the guy we always talk about. He so he should he should have spelled his first letter with a D, so he could he could have been Derek. But well, I forgive him. I forgive him. And great coverage. He's one of the guys you do not want to test in a passing game. Almost had a pick there. So now third down for South Carolina State. Thirteen to go. Ball to forty-five. York drops back, throws, has a man, gets it to him. It's going to be close to a first down. That goes to number 85, Taquan West, West excuse me, on the play. So let's see where they spot this. And it looks like they're going to move the chain. So it's going to be a first down at the 31-yard line. That's right at 10, 35 remaining, Derek. And a good throw by Caleb York. Just stepped in the pocket, had some pressure in his face, didn't let it bother him, and threw a good strike past William Burton. Definitely a heartbreaking <laughs> allowance for the defense of the Hornets. Get him on first two plays and then allow first down on third and long. York gets it again. A 16 checks in. So it's going to be actually a little two quarterback system here. Adrian Kulak 
checked into the game, and I think now you'll get your back game. So a little trickery there. Uh, I guess I don't understand really why you would bring your backup quarterback to throw it. Normally it's maybe a, like a run option type of thing, but don't understand that one. Well, second and 10, 10, 12 remaining, ball in the 31. York in the gun. It's going to give it to Jalen Simmons, and the Hornets defense do a great job there, and he gets nowhere. A gang of Hornets on a, a swarm of Hornets, I guess, on the stop there. Yeah, and Gabriel Sherrod right there in the middle. So third and 10 here, Derek. Ball in the 31, 10 minutes remaining. If they can get a stop here, they might be able to force a punt. They're right on the edge of field goal range here. York with Simmons to his right. Drops back, looks to his left. He's going to go left. Has a man wide open. A Hornet slip. Makes another guy miss. And that's number 85 again for the second time on third down. For his quarterback. And Derek, they can't stop Taquan West early on in this game. Exactly. And I'm just impressed with Caleb York. He got hit hard. when he, But he just stayed in the pocket. Found his receiver. Threw the ball right where it needed to be. And got another first down on third and long. Great job there. And it looks like they're going to bring in the backup again, Derek. So they're keeping the defense off balance. Adrian Kalak in. Gets it. Keeps it. There you go, Derek. You want him to run. And there he goes. He looks like he's going to have a shot at the end zone. Gets down to about the five-yard line. And the Hornets defense is off balance right now. So I'm guessing going to first play, maybe it was a run or pass option. He decided to throw it. But, um, yeah, normally when you see a two-quarterback rotation, normally the second guy is the, the runner. And that certainly was the case on that. So he'll stay out there, Carlock will, with this offense and try to punch it in for a touchdown. There's right nine minutes remaining. So it's going to be second and one at the six-yard line. Hand it off to Simmons, and he has no runner room there. Good job by Sherrod on the backside there. Just see the tight end speed that he has. The converted tight end to the defensive end. He chased him down. Good to hear Sherrod's name. We've been calling it a lot over the past few weeks, and we knew sooner or later he was going to make a play, and he did a good job there. And they got no gain, so I believe that's going to make it third and one, I believe. Actually but it looks like we have a flag on the play. And we have an illegal formation on the offense, Derek. So a positive bright spot for the Hornet defense to push the back a little bit. It is, and they're going to have to find to quell West, and they're going to have to guard him because the first two passes go in his direction. So it'll be second and six, 8.40 remaining. Ball on the 11. And it looks like York will check back into the game. So a little two-quarterback system, something you can see in college, but you don't see in the NFL. Exactly. This isn't something totally new, so the Hornets have to be prepared for it. And it looks like someone jumped offside. It's going to be a free play. And York just throws it up, and it's too far out of Wes's reach. And it looks like we make it all sides on the defense. Would have liked to see York try to place that ball in the end zone, knowing that it's a free play. Just give your receiver a shot on that play, but... No harm, no foul for them since they'll get it off sides. And it's off sides, Derek, so just not the best play there by the defense. Exactly, and those are so dangerous when it's still a live ball and they have a free play. Luckily for the Hornets, it wasn't a touchdown. So second and one, ball will go back to the six-yard line. Eight minutes remaining. Cullock in the game. He may look to run here. Has a lot of big fellas in the game. Looks over to the sideline. Gets the call from David Blanchard, the head coach. He's going to keep it. He's going to run up the middle. He's going to try to push the pile. It's going to be inside about the two-yard line about. And that's going to be a first down, Derek. And like you called it, they had a lot of big guys up front, so you kind of knew the run was going to go up the middle. Hornet still couldn't get any penetration to stop the run in the backfield. They come quickly back to the line. First and goal at the two. Handoff is given, and that's going to be, looks like it's going to be in for the touchdown. Andre Brown right up the heart of the Hornet defense there. And they now lead this game. 
game 12 to 0. Yeah, and that's just, it happened so quickly because the offense and special teams just let the team down so far. So, look, and it's 13 0 or 12 0. 13 0 if they get the point after touchdown. Last one was partially blocked. So, let's see if the Hornets can get them back in the special teams realm. It looks like we have another penalty. Here is just the last run, just power football right up the middle for Jalen Simmons. You can see why he's one of the tougher backs to bring down. Lowered center of gravity, lowered his shoulder, and got into the end. So that'll push the offense back five yards and make the extra point a little more interesting here. So this past drive alone, we've seen about three penalties right around the red zone. Kick is up. Kick is good. And that'll make it 13 to 0 here early on in the first quarter with 749 remaining, Derek. So you're down uh, in a familiar position for the Hornets, down, trailing big early at home. What do you do here? Yeah, the Hornets have definitely had some slow starts in the past games that we've broadcasted. And what do you do? It's just you have to find some type of consistency. They're going backwards on their first two plays. Then third down, it's just uh, we're going to run something safe and then punt it. It's not going to get the job done. I like that they took the shot deep on the first play of the game. Maybe do something like that again because this game is getting away from them quick. They have to make a big play. We wanted to see ground and pound. We wanted to see Jack ball going for the Hornets, but it's not working so far. I wouldn't say it's not working because in the first down they've thrown a lot of passes. But when you're down 13-0, you got to be more aggressive. So unfortunate for the Hornets that they couldn't start the run game earlier. But down 13-0, they have to make something happen now. And you kind of harps back to that first play of the game where they overthrew his tight end. And you kind of think about the best opportunity this team has had on both sides of the ball, how these games could be a little bit different. Exactly. You're maybe not down 13 nothing. You maybe have the ball and score an opportunity. Exactly. It's just missed opportunities have been the Hornets' MO this season. Of course, we know about the point after that was missed. And then a couple of different games where we've had interceptions at inopportune times. And that just has been the way it's been for the Hornets. Have not got the ball, have not gotten much luck for them. But Golson had a good return, went to the 43-yard line. Ball had to be held because of the win, and that's going to go deep. <laughs> to Abrams, who's going to get nowhere. Kind of wonder why he caught that ball. Yeah, I don't understand what happened on that play. He's the blocker. He's the lead blocker. I don't know why he went back to make that catch. It went over his head. Abrams just upset he didn't get that first reception in the game, so he said, I'm going to catch something. <laughs> That's basically what happened on that one. Very rare to see a tight end returning kicks, but I guess, like you said, when he missed that pass, they wanted to make up for that. Well, Derek, first 10 to 14. Who are you looking for from this drive? Hornets, game's not over yet. They have to make something happen this drive. They do have to make something happen. On the first two possessions, they've thrown on the first down. Maybe hand it off this time. Just try to get something positive. And then second down, maybe you take your shot. But they're going backwards in the first two plays, and it's not going to help. Special teams. We saw a little bit of uh, bad plays. We're going to get a look actually at the Nick Sanders here. So, what are you looking for? What has stood out to you so far in the season? Well, North Carolina A&T, they're officially ranked 24th in the nation. They have a terrific running game. They have a terrific dual threat system with a quarterback who can run and pass as well. Tariq Cohen is ex an exceptional running back, leading in rushing. But right there, Bethune Cookman, those two will match up. Those two will play each other, and it's going to be. A terrific game. Expect that to one to be on ESPNU. And not too far behind, Morgan State, NC Central, and South Carolina State are all tied for third. And remember, last year we had a four-way tie, a five-way tie for the MEAC championship. So still a lot of time for those teams in the top half to make something happen. 
First and 10 for the Hornets. Rivera comes out with the gun. Ball on the 15. 7.42 remaining. Hands it off to Jackson. Jackson a little bit of room, but he's not going to get it. Probably he lost the yard on that play. So the offensive line not creating the holes that Jackson likes to run through there. Exactly. And they have, they're run blocking wise, they've had some success when they've pulled the guards towards the right. When they run the ball towards the left, sometimes it just doesn't get it done. It's either a hit or miss on the left side. Second and 12, loss of two on a play, 7-15 remaining. Ball is spotted on the third. South Carolina State looks like they're going to bring pressure. They do. Man comes clean up the middle. Untouched. It's all good. And, and just that like that, it's third right and ten. Can't have two plays like that. Now it's third and ten, third and nine. And so third and 12 there, ball on the 13. But what do the Hornets have to do here? We know they have to get a first down, but they're going to probably have to throw it and get it. It would be interesting to see if they go conservative or if they do try to, in fact, throw the ball in the air on this one. South Carolina State likes that pressure. They're going to probably bring it again here. Three receivers to Rivera's right. Rivera gets a snap. Pressure's coming. Line holds up. Scott gets it on a slant. And that will be interesting to see where they spot it. About a yard and a half short. And it'll be fourth and one, so it's a little bit short. So Derek decision time here. And it looks like they're going to go for it. Uh, I wouldn't go for it if I was them. I would punt it, and it seems like that's what they're doing. Eric Scott isn't happy with that decision. But the running game, you see, minus two yards. Passing game, pressure is right in Rivera's face. And if they don't get it, then they're putting their defense on the 24, 25 yard line and say, okay, hold them again. So this is the right decision to punt. Punt, they'll go with the punt. Still a lot of time remaining in this game. McGay's punt is clean, but this is not one of his best. And it takes the South Carolina State bounce to the 40 yard line. Well, Derek, they have to, they don't have to do any work to move the ball today. It's being given to them. Yeah, exactly. And not the best start for the special teams. It's just been awful. And honestly, that's the best special teams play they've had. It was just a 19 yard punt. So it's not looking good. That unit has to get it together. So it'll be first and 10 on a 39. Actually, they'll spot it for South Carolina State. And let's see what quarterback we get this drive. And it looks like it will be York to start the drive off. York gets the snap, looks to his right, goes back left. It's going to be a screen, knocked away. And York, what a play there by the But if a veteran play there, knocking the ball to the ground. And if he didn't knock it down, Barrett is still running with that football, taking it into the end zone. Smart, heady play by York. Just say, uh, no, no, you can't have it. Kind of want to see that happen for the defense. That could definitely change the momentum of this game. But second and ten for the Bulldogs here. York in the gun. Simmons to his left. And it's like we have a false start. Someone jumped on that line. I think it's going to be Caldwell, the receiver, took off early. I don't understand how these receivers – get called for a false start. Well, that'll help the Hornets out again. We see a little bit of sloppiness on both sides here today, Derek. As South Carolina State will be moved back five yards. And York and the offense will try to get it. Hornets look to bring pressure. York gets it. Throws it. And that pass is actually going to be grabbed there by Tamaric. Hemingway, excuse me. And Terry Coaster was all hand. over him. So, I, somehow he was able to haul it in with one hand. Just tip it cap there. That was great defense. Third down. So it's going to be third and short here. I'm mean, interested to see what the Hornets do on defense. York looks over to the sideline. It's going to be third, excuse me, third and 12. Ball on the 41. Looks over to Coach Pro for the play. He's going to empty it out. Five receivers. Gets it. Throws a screen. It's going to go short, but a great stop there by the Hornets recognizing that play. And a great job there by Rashawn Barrett on the stop. And he's having himself a good game. He had a piece of that point after early on for the block and then almost had an interception. And there, that screen has some chance for success, but he recognized it at the last second and ran back and brought him down for the fourth down tackle. 
Well, Derek, it's fourth and ten, five minutes remaining, and South Carolina State will punt for the first time today. Punt is going to be angled out of bounds, and it will go out of bounds. They may spot that around, hopefully, the 18. Looks like, oh, that's like he'll get 15, so guess they gave it an extra bounce. A little, little generous spot there. <laughs> I think we both saw it kind of go off at the 18. So we're very on the offense, third possession of the day. What have you seen from this offense early on? I haven't really seen anything, honestly. I think we both can admit to that. We haven't seen the ball move forward at all, really. But um, it got to see what happens. Uh, Rivera is, has that deep throw ability. He just has to have some confidence in himself, put the air under the ball, let his receivers make a play. But they have to get something going, either the running game or the passing game. I would love to see Jackson be the one getting the ball on the outside and letting him use his speed. But whatever they do, they have to find some – type of success going forward. You said ground and pound special teams and limit turnovers on your keys to the game. So what, if any, have worked or what hasn't worked? Uh, well, no, they haven't limit turnovers. They haven't really ran the ball, and we've definitely seen special teams. So they're over 3. Still, still a long game remaining, and hopefully something can happen to get this crowd going. Nobody's standing up but nothing. It's a homecoming game, but there's just nothing for the, cr the crowd to cheer about. So we first and 10 for the Hornets on a 15. So it looks like Hornets will come out in the pistol. Ball on the 15-yard line. Looks like Allen joins. Rivera in the backfield today on this drive. Excuse me, that's going to be run to the left for a short gain there. And the Hornets are going to stick with their run game we've seen, even if they're trailing there. They have to. It's still early in the first half, and so you have to have some type of balance. And the running game should have been the focal point early on, but it hasn't really been that way. Bryson Allen on the carry for a gain of one, second and nine. Pressure from South Carolina State. Throw is arid and out of bounds as it was intended for Scott. So it'll set up a third down and nine on the 16. So Derek, third and long. The Hornets have made a trend of this all season. Yeah, and it's something which just has have to be able to make it third and four, third and five. For a backup quarterback to have to keep throwing on third, 10, third, 11 against the best pass defense in the MEAC, it's, it's an impossible goal to achieve. Four minutes remaining in the first quarter. Hornets with three receivers to his right. Steps up, Rivera does. He's going to throw it. Has Scott. Scott has some room to run. Gets out of bounds, and I believe that's going to be a first down, Derek. And a good job by Rivera extending the play with his legs and looking up the field to make the pass. And R. Scott in his last season, in the senior year, he's kind of starting to emerge as that go-to receiver. He had 12 receptions. Last game already has two today. Definitely want to get him involved in the offense. As you said, last week with 12 catches, two were early on today with 3.55 remaining in the first quarter, and it's a new set of downs at the 34-yard line for the Hornets. Fakes it, and we're going to get a timeout, looks like, from Coach Carter. So he saw something he didn't like there. Yeah, and first half timeouts don't kill you at all, so you want to use them and get the right play together. They finally got a first down, so Carter sees got a little bit more middle. Let me call a good play to make something happen. Well, outside of the timeout, you just picked up your first third down conversion of the day. What do you do here to keep it moving? Uh, well, it seemed like they were going to go into a no huddle off of the completion, and I would like to see them do that. No huddles can throw off a good defense because the communication can break down. So make that short completion, and no huddle will be a good opportunity, but they have to get something going. There's just nothing positive going right now where you can say, okay, do this, do that, or do this, but... Hopefully they can get some momentum after that completion.
Well, Dirk, corner side of the timeout. A lot of energy in the crowd today. Rivera will look to feed off of that and try to keep this drive alive. Rivera comes on the gun. Looks like Allen is to his right. Scott at the bottom of your screen. Golson in motion. It goes to Allen. Allen runs right. Has some blockers in front of him. Has some space. Allen has a chance and gets a gain of about nine. So good play there out of the timeout. Allen might have been a, just a tad too patient. Just a tad too patient. If he went earlier, he might have gotten a touchdown. Definitely that split second. But a great job. And it's going to be a first down for the Hornets. So two straight first downs on two plays, Derek. We've Offense seen, is moving. We've seen this formation before. If they throw a screen again, it's not going to work. It has to be a different play. It's the it exact is same formation. This time it goes to Allen, but it means nothing. As he swallowed up there by South Carolina State, number 96, James Settles. They might have to throw that whole formation in the trash. I just had, it's been negative yards so far with that one. Second and 11 ball in the 43. Three minutes remaining in the first quarter. And Rivera goes to the line to check the play. Rivera gets a snap. Going to be an option. Goes outside. It's Allen. Allen goes to the sideline. Not much of a game there. Tackle was made by Chestnut on the play. But you're seeing something. The outside runs are having a little bit more of success. For some reason, they kept running at the preseason player of the year in Javon Hargrove, and it wasn't working. Runs to the outside, get these guys to move, and tie out the defensive line. Third and eight ball in the 46. Hornets definitely want to keep this drive alive. Rivera looks to sideline, gets the play. There's going to be a lot of pressure on this play, it looks like. And we have a guy drop back. Bulldogs are coming. Rivera double pumps in. Guess who it is, Derek? Number 97. One of your impact players, Javon Harvey. And he double pumped when you knew the pressure was coming. I don't know what was going on between him and Aaron Scott. They looked at each other twice. But I think Rivera was expecting Scott to continue to go deep. Aaron Scott broke off the route, so Rivera had to hold on and he got sacked. Well, that'll set up a fourth and long, and the ones will definitely punt here, so. Not the way you want that in that drive. Gave you a little bit of a squib punt, I guess. And it's going to take a Hornet bounce to about 24-yard line. And the Hornets actually pinned the Bulldogs in their own territory for the first time. Yeah, ever. this is the first time they've, they've actually had to move from the 20 or 24-yard line. So the defense is, of course, I think they're a little bit happy about that. Derek, the defense has a good shot to possibly get the ball back for the offense. What do you look for? Defensively, they got to get off on third downs. And they're forcing the third downs, the long third downs, but they're allowing a lot of completions. Have to get off the field on third down. So a lot comes out, empty set, throws it, has a man. It's going to be a gain of about eight. So the Hornets probably weren't expecting the throw there. Those are one of the plays where the quarterback just looks and sees that the corner is off, not playing any press coverage, and you just throw the quick pass. Jermaine Baxley on a reception. Kolak will stay in the game on this first down play. One minute remaining. Handoff goes to number 40, and he's a bulldozer truck running down the sideline. Andre Brown, who had a touchdown earlier, a big gain on the play. What do you do, Derek, when a guy like that runs at you full speed? Oh, well, well, for me, I leave. I don't. For me. But the, uh, the Hornets have to tackle low. They have to take his legs out. Don't tackle high and get stiff armed in the face. So, Kulak, top quarterback on his drive. 45 seconds remaining. First minute we have a little bit of movement down below. Ball in the 49. Looks like a false start. So, that'll go back five yards. I think that was Stephenson again. I think that's the second time he's been called for an offsides. And whenever a lineman's name is called, you know it's for the bad reasons. <laughs> so 40 seconds remaining, first and 15, ball in the 44. Kalak still in the game, four receivers. 
Two toes left, two toes right. Takes a snap, looks left, throws left, and great job there by the defense of the Hornets. Reading that play out, Jail Robinson was on the play though. And they did a good job disguising the blitz to the very last second, and Barrett came off on the edge and forced that quick throw. Second and 15, 26 seconds remaining. First quarter, it's been going on for a long time. But it's been a long yeah, it's been the longest quarter I've been a part of. Like J.R. Robinson with the takedown. Maintaining level of energy First, the yard line. Showing that start of the top of the run. Pulls it out. Pullock keeps. Hands it off, and he's going to get there. Nice job on the defense up front. And that's going to be Andre Lewis Freeman. Right now, let's
defense off the field. Looks like Kalak is the quarterback at the moment. Two receivers to his right. Five again. And that's going to move the chain to the Bulldogs. Every single matchup is number 23. And Monica holding them. That's a good for the Hornets. Better late than call for the Hornets to set them back and make it and long. Third and 16 ball to 45. You have to get a stop here for the Look for 85. West. West continues to make these third down catches. That's Todd going to take it, and there's no one in sight, and that's going to be a great stop on the defense. And Mike and West ran into each other. West ran into but was led to that incompletion. So the force dogs to we the horse horse defense. Horse. Exactly, that's a good a Fortunate oh. for the Hornets. Take a fair inside. The one player for the Hornets who pretty much regressed since the first. Some outside were very successful in the last possession, especially with Bryce Allen and his speed. Run some plays to the outside, off tackle runs to see if they can get something going. Well, the Hornets are completely down 13. Get on the board quickly, but still a lot of time left. It's a lot of time left, but. Like said, something, something has to happen. We have to put some points up eventually. It feels like when we're broadcasting, we're always talking about it. This has to be the possession to happen. This has to be the possession to happen. Eventually, something has to happen. Watch me. 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 Gun. Allen in motion. And he's one of the score. goes right and he throws. Yeah. That was all set there by Deshaun Ted. Would have had a touchdown. And there's going to be a flag on. Looks like probably on the offense. Those are the that Rivera has made often more. Sometimes he can make those passes. But then other times it just you're wondering what were you thinking in type of situation like that? He threw it right the Well, second and ten Hornets live to fight another down. Now they gonna beat up your energy. We need to get him back in this game. Bear and a gun. Goes in motion. Takes it, gives it off to Allen. Allen runs left. Has some space, puts his head down. And that's why I was when he runs to the outside. You see, 
those positive four or five yard gains. Those outside runs, tires out defensive plays in the quarters. Second, excuse me. One thing I gotta wonder is what happened to Jamil Jackson. He the game for the Allen. A lot of smaller backs that are very patient. He clearly is running underneath his pads and he's following his blocks. Third and one. Hornets need a conversion. Ball on the 22. 11 34 remaining. Down 13. Definitely want to keep this drive alive. South Carolina State going to bring pressure. We're waiting for that. They get it. Allen doesn't get anything on that play. South Carolina State knew that play was coming. And everybody knew the play was happening. Would have liked to see Rivera count to try to draw them off sides. Didn't work. The Hornets will give the ball away again. And South Carolina State will get very And the defense is going to hold them again. It's just not really fair for the defense to say, continue to hold your guy from the 50-yard line. That's it. Punt even gets completed. So the Hornets will punt. Hamilton back deep. That's a pretty good punt from McGay. What we're accustomed to see. Williams is going to get. He's electrifying. He's electric, but he's not going to get much here. Great job there by the Hornets special team. You don't get to say that a lot. Yeah, but he, that's what he's done. He's done pretty much all season. He gets a chance to punt it. He normally gets about 40, 45 in that time. So that was a good punt for him. Oh, Derek, you said the Hornets defense has to come to the end of their offense and somehow find a way to get the ball back. And maybe they would say create a turnover of their own and maybe try to put some points on the board. The Tower game where the defense pick for, for the touchdown that sparked the offense to make a play. That's normally how it works for the Hornets. When a defense can make a turnover or score, then the Hornets offense builds off of that momentum. What have you seen from the State two quarterback system? Last few drives with color, the veteran uh, of the group. I think the Hornets have respect. Oh, besides the first run that he had, they know that when the second is run, first quarterback, you know, is best. So it's predictable. Hope will mix it up when it's in play action with the, the running quarterback. Something that, that way. But they've done a good job to when they reasonable field position. So let's call again. Hornets look to bring pressure. Is it here? And here. Of his way to remaining. Color has a man. Jameson. Wait. Wasn't on the money for the horn. Put some pressure that turnover. Put Tariq Coast in. Defense. The defense of a ball. Good job. Pressure. 
Rand Lawrence. In danger right when he had Hold on. Possibly get the to this punt. And that's on Rivera. He has to get everybody lined up. He knows he has ghosts and moving in motion. Make sure he's ready before you hike the ball. And penalties, once again, have become one of the Achilles heels of this Hornets team. There are so many, but penalties have been attributed to some of them. Yeah, and last year the Hornets committed the least amount of PX, so that's not what you want to see is them trending downward in terms of committing too many of those. Rivera and a pistol. Allen in motion. Handoff is going to go to Allen. Tries to find some room, man. Doesn't have much there, and it'll be, looks like, a short gain there. Setting up about second and 12. Well, Derek, not only is it about third downs, but about good first and second down plays as well. Well, they're going to bring pressure, so you know you're going to have one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Rivera has to have faith in his receivers if he does have a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Rivera looks at the sidelines, going to check the play. Rivera gets the snap, looks left, has nowhere to go, and he is going to go down, and the ball's out, and South Carolina State has it. And well, Derek. Things just got even worse. And nobody was open. Rivera had to hold on to that ball because if he threw it, it was going to be taken to the house. That's just unfortunate that he couldn't hold on to it and just at least not fumble it. But some of these receivers are just not getting off the line. I was watching Eric Scott on the far side, top of your screen, and he was getting jammed up at the line and never got free. All the other receivers ran short routes and got cut off. So nothing for him to do. And the offensive line didn't give him any time to make a decision. Well, York's back in, hands it off, and there's nowhere to go there. Good job by Malik for Harris. Justin Taylor. With the tackle, Harris. We haven't called his name too much, but a very, very good linebacker. Second and ten, eight minutes remaining. Kalak back in the game. Hands it off here to Dondre Brown. Looks like a gain of two. Hornets lead, or uh, trail, excuse me, 13 to 0. Once again, got a call on the Hornets to make a stop on third down. So it'll be second and 10 here. York back under center, or excuse me, in a gun. Fakes the handoff, throws, has a man with space to run. It's Brown, Brown. Takes a horn defender with him, and he's got a first down. And that was Malik Harris' man, but he tripped right off the start of the play and was nowhere near his defend his receiver and was unable to even get to him. So it'll be a first and goal. And the Hornets have to get a stop here as Kalak's in the game, and he may be looking to keep this himself. Kalak keeps it, runs left, and he has nowhere to go, and Hornets knew that was coming.
and this is a huge possession. And if this becomes a three possession game, you think some of the crowd might even start leaving after this halftime performance. So go back to some of that tents. Second and goal at the seven. South Carolina State already leads by 13. Looking to add to that lead. Kalak gets in. We'll have a, looks like, timeout by the Hornets. So they use their second timeout. One remaining. Saw something they didn't like. Exactly. And Kenneth Carter knows this is an extremely, extremely important possession. And they have to make a very important stop. So can't take the timeouts home with you. So might as well use them. Well, Derek, second and goal. Not much room for error here for the Hornet defense. What do they have to do, or what will they do after this timeout? Well, you want to – their go-to has been to run the ball for South Carolina State Bulldogs. So that's the first thing you want to eliminate is the option run or the option keep or see if they can stop that. But those corners still have to be alert because they're on the island by themselves. If the Hornets can somehow hold him at three here, you have to think this may be a small victory. And it would be. It would be a small victory because it's still theoretically a two-possession game. So second and goal, York back in the game, un at quarterback, in the gun. York looks left, throws left, has a man, and that pass was a little bit out of the reach of his intended receiver there to Merrick Hemingway. So third and goal here, Derek. What do the Hornets do? They're going to have to eliminate any, slot, any slant routes, any routes inside, force all the passes to be made outside near the boundary. Looks like they have an injured Hornet. Yeah, it looks like someone's hurt. That's like nice hurt. J.R. I mean, Robinson. Burton, excuse me. Oh, that's Burton. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. That's down. They have to come out for at least a play. Doesn't look anything too serious as he's walking off on his own power, but he did take his helmet off, which is never a good sign. It actually looks like he's, he's maybe just a cramp or something. Well, third and goal ball to seven. 6.30 remaining in that. Until the half, Hornets trail 13-0, trying to keep it that way. South Carolina State knocking on the door. Little pirouette there. Throw. It is a missed tackle in the open field. And, ladies and gentlemen, Dodger Brown has the second touchdown of the game. And an open field tackle just missed there by the Hornets. Yeah, and Logan Westcott has made plays for the Hornets before. And that was, a, was an easy one. He just missed him. And for Will Burton, I thought it might have been just cramps. But he's getting a con concussion test. So, we'll see how he holds up. West Scott, like you said, had a great shot, made some plays, but just missed the tackle there and whiffed. And definitely something you don't want to do. And the kick is good. So 20 to 0 remaining in the first half. <laughs> Still a lot of time remaining in the first half, Derek. Yeah, definitely a lot of time remaining, but. Not much signs of positivity for that Hornets offense. And you're seeing the Hornets defense starting to get beat up as Burton's has a, having concussion test. And some of the Hornets are just missing tackles now, maybe because they're so tired and been on the field basically the entire half. Down 20 to 0. What can a team do to find some sort of hope? 
knowing that this game isn't over, but you got to make some changes immediately. Basically, if they score here, there'll be some momentum going into the halftime break, and you'll cut it to a two-possession game. But normally, with swings to Hornets or those big type of plays, they don't really string together a lot of big plays or a lot of short completions and move the offense methodically down the field. Whenever they score, it's because a big play's been generated. So somebody has to step up and make that play. And the Hornets are having a unique kick return formation out there. They have three returners lined up. Kick goes between the legs, <laughs> and it goes to Allen, and he gets to about the 34-yard line on that play, and the Hornets will set up shop there. Rivera in the empty set, Allen in motion. He's going to fake the Allen. Rivera keeps it. Didn't see that one coming. Yeah, Rivera not really the running threat that Obato is. But got a couple of yards on that play. Second and seven in the game of three. Six minutes remaining. Rivera. Allen in motion again. This time it's going to go to Allen. Allen runs left. Nowhere to go. He's going to get a gain of about one, maybe two on the play. So a little predictability here from the Hornet offense. Not much guessing. That has to be done by the Bulldogs. And it's hard. You know, we, we harp on the coordinators and we harp on Coach Carter about using unique, unique formations. But we don't have an offensive line that can protect. And you don't have receivers that can get open. It's hard to develop any type of plays that works. Third down and six. Hornets desperately need the first down here. Ball on the 39 yard line. Rivera with some pressure coming, throws it to Scott. And Scott was knocked. But it looks like it may be a flag on the play. And Hamilton just a tad bit too early. Aaron Scott, who's the only person winning his matchup on the outside, was able to draw the flag there. Definitely something in the corner's favor. So we'll probably get past the fans, spot the foul. And if I'm Rivera, I'm just looking for Scott. He had 12 receptions last game, and he's the only person that consistently has beaten his man off the line of scrimmage. Well, the Hornets get a first down in the worst way, and they definitely take it there. And with just about five minutes left in the, second, in the first half, it's, it's a huge possession for them to score. I've said huge possession for the last three possessions, but, it's, it's, but I mean it. It's very important for the Hornets to get something on the board. First and ten, Hornets with the ball. Gives it off to Jackson. Jackson with his first carry of the day. And he moves the power forward for a short game as we're at five minutes remaining. And the Hornets look to pick up the tempo here offensively. The no huddle has worked. I like to get back to a lot of stuff. I don't know why they keep running out here at Hargrove. I just don't get it. You never want to run right directly to the best player. Because normally that best player is going to show you why you want to put that in place. And he's done it every single time. I understand all the strategy to get into it in one second. So third and five, third measure. They're in the offense. Shot since the first play of the game. Maybe this is a situation midfield. 
Rivera, option on third down, and he's going to get the first down. What a play there by Rivera. You talked about his lack of mobility in athleticism, but he did. He made a nice move, too, because he was going to get hit hard if he did not juke Hargrove out of his shoes on that one. Hornets get the first down on a play, and they have a little bit of a drive assembling here, Derek. They're going to keep the pace moving. Chung has checked into the game. So for Carolina State, may look to bring pressure. Fakes, great pass, great play action, fake. And that is a great play there from Rivera, finding his man, Morris Frazier, on the reception. Good design there, and those option plays work when they're able to fake it. And that's how you call plays. That's how the, the, the offense is supposed to look. Every play looking the same, but having different results. Rivera and the gun. Offense has looked pretty good this drive. First and 10 on the 23. Down 20 points. Hornets definitely need some points here. Rivera gets the snap. Throws it. It's going to take a shot for the end zone. Has a man. It's knocked away. Great defense there by Antonio Hamilton. Not showing he's only a kick returner, but a great cornerback as well. And one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, but that pass, he wasn't able to get it towards the sideline where his receiver could make a play. And good job by Hamilton. He had that pass interference earlier that's extended this drive, but good job getting his head back around, locating the football, and making a play on it. Well, the secondary of the Bulldogs is one of the best in the MEAC. And you see why there. So second and ten. Hornets with the ball at the 23-yard line. Rivera gets it. He's going to do an option. Allen gets it. Squeaks through. Tries to get some room and nothing there, but it's going to be a flag on the play. Might be a face mask. So we got a block in the back on the Hornets. And just when they were moving the ball down the field, they shoot themselves in the foot. So second 19 for Hornets ball on the 32. Close in motion. Rivera hands it to Allen. Allen runs right. Tries to find some space, but there's nothing there. And he's going to lose some yards. And the Hornets are going back. What's here, Derek? And they were having success throwing the ball. And then out of nowhere, two straight carries. And I like the balance. I'm not going to criticize the play call. But no result in those two carries. Third and 20. Hornets racing on time. Get back to the line here. If you're Rivera, you're looking maybe not going for the first down, but maybe inside the 25-yard line to give your field goal kicker a chance to put something on the board for them. Rivera in the gun. He's going to drop back. He's going to take a shot. Throws it to Golson, and that is almost intercepted. Like by Kendrick Gathers. Gathers almost had it and Rivera just has no time back there he stepped up and had three Bulldogs right in his face and any quarterback I don't care if it's Tom Brady Peyton Manning anybody if you have three defenders running right in your face that pass is going to be inaccurate well the Hornets still like they're going to go for fourth and 20 here my thought process if you're going to go for it on fourth down why did they take that long shot deep on third and you see, wow, a punt there from <laughs> Rivera. I actually like the idea. Fourth and 20 is probably leading to an interception or a sack. At least pinned them in their 15, 14-yard line. And Hey, you do it that way, the kick doesn't get blocked. Well, Derek, 
Hornets haven't really done much. That was their best drive of the day, and it still resulted with no points. And we're at two minutes remaining here in the first half. And the crowd was just getting into it. And that's demoralizing to a crowd to see the ball move from the tw your own 20 all the way down to the 30 with no points happen. York throws it, and that's going to be a first down there to number 85 again, Taquan West. He's having a big day early on. Yeah, somebody should probably, you know, cover him because he I think he's the only one with a reception. York gets it, and it's like we're going to have a stoppage and play. I think it might be a play clock or something might be wrong. As we're still waiting for confirmation of what that exactly was. But. So we have some clock issues, as you said, Derek. And they just wanted to reset the clock to 142. The play clock was at 139 before the refs changed it. And that is a great play there. And there he is again, Taquan West. So might, you might want to put yeah, two guys on. Might want to. One guy isn't working. Whether it was Burton or Robinson, West has just had his way. And South Carolina State is moving this ball like they're trailing and looking to add more points to the board. York throws it to West. It's a little bit of uh, miscommunication there. He threw it before he was ready. And he was even open that way. Yeah, he's, he's getting open pretty much every play, except the one time his own receiver ran into him. But besides that, nobody's been able to stop him. One twenty-eight remaining in first half, second and ten, ball to 44 for the Bulldogs. York gets it, looks right, throws right, has a man, but he underthrown. Had a man wide open in the scene. Samaritan Carr. And I think might be a roughing of pass here. Actually it's gonna be a holding, so good break for the Hornets. Ladies and gentlemen, please look over to the student section. I got a feature right here. It's a future right here. He said the better times that I'm going to come to the game, too. It's strange. Second and 20 backs up the Bulldogs here to the 34. And we have more movement. Looks like it's going to be all sides on the horn. Well, everybody's pointing each way, so let's see what it is. Left tackle Lennon looks a little guilty, or left guard Lennon. Now both sides saying they jump first, he jump first. You always see this. Exactly. Oh, they got a false start. Yeah, it was on Lita. He looked guilty. He was the only one who didn't point his finger. He kind of threw his hands up in the air. Well, second and 25. That'll help out the defense a little bit, Derek. Ball on the 29-yard line. York hands it off, and there's a big hole party like the Red Sea. And look at that, Derek. There's your impact player, Jalen Simmons, finally getting his best run of the day. You see the explosiveness when he does, able to get a full hit of steam there. Good call for the run and got those 10 yards back and more. So third and 10, one minute remaining in the first half. South Carolina State definitely aiming to put more points on the board. And they actually still have all their timeouts. Option, Simmons gets it, cuts back, nowhere to go. Mishirab was really close to deflecting that option, which would have led to a fumble. 
really close, but just couldn't get to it in time. Fourth and eight, Derek, so it looks like the Hornets may get a quick opportunity. And a good job by the Hornets defense to kind of stop the bleeding there because the Bulldogs aren't going to take their foot off the pedal. They're going to continue trying to put points on the board. Well, Derek, you got 46 seconds, no timeouts. What do you do here? Well, you hope you get a good return. Ghostin is a playmaker when he can't get the ball in his hands. It's just this season and part of last season, he just has not had the opportunities. Yeah. Booming punt. Golson can do nothing but fair catch. Do you still try to take a shot here and maybe try to put some points on the board? Yeah, because if not, South Carolina State gets the ball to start the second half. So you got to take your shots here. There's enough time left to get some points on the board. But they are going to have to do that through the air. Well, the ball of Man Rivera's hands looks like no timeouts. Have to move quickly. Here. One thing I would not do is have an empty set because you know that you're going to have to double team number 97. And you know they've had really struggled to keep Rivera clean in the pocket. So maybe keep a running back to chip or a tight end to block as well. 40 seconds remaining, Rivera in the gun. Not in the empty set. Gonna take the snap, step up, avoids the sack, avoids another one, throws it, Chung gets it, and I guess he made something out of nothing there. Yeah, and that's what we were talking about. They, they, didn't, they didn't have an empty set, but nobody stayed back to block. So you basically have five linemen trying to contain this great defensive line that's second in the MEAC in sacks per, per game. Rivera looks, throws, has Scott. Scott is going to get out of bounds. But as we know in college football, the clock does start once they set the ball back. So 10 seconds remaining. And good job finding that empty part of that man's own defense. Derek, 10 seconds remaining. What do you do here? Continue to just air the ball out, but you want to, most of the passes you want to be on the sideline, but you still have one shot left to maybe take it to the end zone, but if not, it has to be to the sideline. Only 10 seconds remaining, so if they're not going to throw it into the end zone, they have to be able to get out of bounds. You don't have much to lose if you do take that shot, it is intercepted. So I guess you got to see what can happen. You never know, you could get a pass interference call. Exactly. So anything can happen, and there's uh, less of a chance for it to be, you know, picked and leads a good field position because there's no time remaining. Well, Rivera will be in the gun. Three receivers to his right. Steps up. Going to take that shot, and he's actually going to go down. And Derek, you know the name. You know what he does. And taking down quarterbacks is his occupation. Yeah, and that was about to be his third sack. It won't count as a sack because Rivera was able to gain one yard when he fell, but... Somebody has to block him. Well, Derek, we're at halftime here. Hornets trail 20 to zero. Well, what have you seen here in the first half? Haven't seen much, honestly, have not seen much. That last possession they were able, or the last possession before the 10 seconds remaining and everything, they, we've seen the Hornets move the ball into the red zone, but got killed by penalties. And, Coach Carter is going to earn his check because I don't know what they have to do to get everything sorted out. There's just so many different areas where there's been problems. The special teams hasn't looked great. The defense is looking tired because they've been on the field too long. The offense can't block number 97, Hardgrove, and they can't really convert on their running game either. So I don't know what Coach Carter is going to tell his team, but 
he's going to have to be like a, a magician in order to fix all these problems for the Hornets. Well, we'll be right back after this halftime performance for the second half action. Once again, Delaware State University trails 20-0. to zero. We'll be right back with WDSU TV. Stay tuned. For your continuous support, today's show is a tribute to the history and the alumni of the approaching storm. The hits from the Black IP, Charlie Beverly and Hayes. Donna Summer, Ducky Fresh out of Mavada, the Soul Sonic Force, and a few others to get you out of your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, DSU Band Alumni, it is time. It was once said that we wake up in the morning with our minds set on marches. It was once said quietly before quantity. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. It was once said that one morning can sing you on a swamp can be deadly. It was once said that it don't take many to do a plenty. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. It was once said that it's not how many you got, it's who you got. It was once said that if you don't know, you better ask somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the most electrifying band in our land, the Delaware State University Marching Band. The Delaware State University Marching Band.
Demetrius Stolen, known as Priya, is a graduating senior, major in political science. Priya stands for Stand on her favorite scripture found in Romans 8:28, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Upon graduation, Priya would like to attend graduate school to obtain a master's degree in women's studies. She decides to become an advocate for women and urban youth. The Royal Dynasty is joined in action by Little Mister and Mrs. Delaware State University, William Wilson and Keisha Eagle. Let's give our kings and queens a round of applause. Everybody out here, all my alumni, family, and friends, just to be out here. It's just good to see people you ain't seen in a long time, right? It's just real good. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I said next year, I'm in my personal duty to make homecoming next year one of the best homecomings ever. I'm making my duty. I'm gonna talk to Dr. Williams, the man from the lady. I'm going to talk to the Alumni Association. I'm going to talk to all my alumni. With that, that moolah. Look, all these people right here in these, these box seats, all my people in these seats, I'm going to make the homecoming stand one of the best. If you're going to make some noise, let's give me a clap or something. We got some new ideas we're going to implement. So make sure we get your emails. The telephone number, sign up. We're trying to take Delaware State University to the next level. You don't see no office You ain't seen it yet? Go see the new office building, the new glass building. That's all you need to know. It costs about a trillion dollars. 30 tuition. Who wanna wobble with me? I want people almost to a wobble right here. No matter how long, no matter where you are, when the wobble come on, you just start wobbling. I think you're wobbling at a funeral. I think you're doing it.
out to about the 25-yard line where South Carolina State will have their first possession of the second half. And first half, we saw a lot of two quarterback systems. What worked well for them, do you think, offensively? Um, I didn't think they really struggled too much with that two-quarterback system. It was really just the turnovers on the offensive side that hurt the Hornets. And also, they can't guard West. West has killed them on third downs. On third downs, they're looking for West, and he's caught five passes. So they have to find a way to contain him and force them to go somewhere else with the football. York will be the quarterback to start. Gets the handoff, throws, and there is West Derrick right on the first possession, or first play, excuse me, of the second half and gets a nice short game there. Yeah, he does a good job using his size. He's a 6'4 receiver, and those guys normally have their way with shorter corners. And that's his sixth catch so far of the game. He's looking to be in double figures by the end of it. Pass goes short, and he has a big hole in front of him, and he looks like he is going to walk into the end zone, and that's going to be Leonard Jamison on a play. Derek, what happened there? 
as they just kind of slept walk. Just, I don't know what, what happened. Maybe the halftime was too long for them and they weren't ready to go, but that's just a huge play to give up. Now you're looking at a four possession game. And you talk about a dagger early on in the second half. Wow, can't give that play up. Defense hasn't played horrible today, but giving up plays like that won't help. Yeah, just a simple screen play wasn't much to it, but caught the Hornets off guard. And like you said, a simple screen play, something that the Hornets have actually done a solid job of containing, especially with their speed on the outside, allowing him to break that for a big game. Yeah, it was good blocking by the receivers. Uh, nice cut block. He was able to give Jamison that open lane, and he showed his speed and just took off from there. Extra point pending. They'll be up 27 points, and the Hornets will be in deep, deep trouble here on their homecoming. Kick is up, and it is good. Oh, Derek, down 27 is over. What do you do as a team? Do you keep trying to fight it? Yeah, I mean, you definitely want to continue to fight during your homecoming. Nothing's worse than looking up at the stands in the fourth quarter and everybody left because it was a poor performance. But if they don't do something to generate some type of excitement, that's exactly what's going to happen here. And that would be the second year in a row they've gotten blown out in their own homecoming game. So they're going to have to put up some type of fight. But offensively, it's, they're just so limited. When the offensive line is not protecting your quarterback, they're getting no push up the front for the running game, and the receivers, besides Eric Scott, have not unable to be able to get open. So it's really very limited choices for Coach Carter right now. He's going to have to figure out a way to generate some time for Rivera to step back and make his decisions because the running game can't really be used anymore down four scores. So he's going to have to find a way to protect Rivera and allow him to throw the football. Well, the Hornets will have an opportunity on offense. They did have a solid drive at the end of the second quarter but it didn't result in any points but the Hornets have to somehow put it together for a full drive to at least put some points on the board to give them some hope as there are still uh, two full quarters left as there are still 14-20 in the third quarter. Yeah you hit it right on the nail of the head there is that their best possession ended up in a quarterback punting the ball. That's never something you want to say so they got to get something going. Kick goes deep Allen will get it, and it'll go out of bounds, so something positive for the Hornets there. Good field position for the Hornets. They've had good field position for most of the game. They just have not been able to convert on it. What does Rivera have to do here in your opinion, Derek? Well, he has to get some time. And if he doesn't have time, he has to be able to escape the pocket and scramble around a little bit longer to create some time for his receivers to get open. But they have to keep a running back in to chip block or keep a tight end to help block these linemen because they're generating a lot of pressure with a four-man rush. Rivera gets the snap, hands it off to Allen. Allen runs right, tries to sneak through, but does still get about two yards. They have stick to the run game, even when they're down there. Well, they can't put Rivera out there by himself. He's a backup quarterback. The offensive line can't block Hargrove. So still want to keep these linemen honest and have to guard the run. Rivera in the gun. Gets the snap, hands it off. Chung gets it, runs right, has some space. Gets a big gain, and that's going to be a first down for the Hornets. Good run there by Chung. We don't know what's going on with Jamal Jackson, but a good run there. Yeah, Jamal Jackson has not been in since the first couple of possessions. I don't even see him on the sideline. Actually, I do. He has his helmet off, though. So, yeah, Jamal just have to hope he's okay. And the Hornets on first down with a short gain there by Chung. Second down and eight for the Hornets. Ball at the 49, 13-20 remaining here. Third quarter just underway. Rivera in the gun gets the snap. Looks, has nowhere to go, has to get rid of it. He will go down. Does gain about a yard, but 
see the defense there by South Carolina State. They've been getting after it all day. Yeah, they were second in the MEAC in sacks coming into today's game with 20 in six games. They generate a lot of pressure. And it's hard for an offense when you're getting such pressure with just four people. They're not blitzing, so there's not like one-on-one -on, -one on the outside most of the time. Rivera in this offense facing a third down and seven. Two, three receivers to his left. Rivera will keep it on the option. We have seen that. But the play wasn't ruled down. The ball came out, but I think they're going to rule him down. Yeah, he definitely fell first. He is down probably a yard short of the first down. And it's fourth and one. They have to go for it at this point. No choice, right? But it doesn't look like they are. It's like they're sending out the punt unit. Wow, that doesn't show a lot of faith in your offense. Well, there's not a lot of faith generated, but they're down four scores, so you might as well go for it. I don't like that it's a punt, and I hope it's not a fake. They faked it sometimes here, and it has not worked out. I'm not a person that really likes fake punts. Hasn't been a great week for fake punts in the game of football. I hope it doesn't look anything like the Colts fake punts. That punt is going to go deep, and it's going to take a bulldog bounce and be a touchback, Derek. So they actually did punt it. Well, they punted it, but it's only a 20-yard difference because of it goes into the end zone. So, I, I mean, I understand you don't want to put your defense in that bad position again, but they're down so many points. There's only a certain amount of possessions remaining, and especially with that type of field position. That I think you've got to go for it in that situation, but I don't like that call. Had to think this offense can get a yard, right? I mean, they haven't been able to get much push on the front line, but you would think so, at least on the outside. When they've had some success running to the outside, they've had success when they haven't ran towards Harv Grove, so that's, that's what they should have done is not run to number 97, and they probably would have got the first down. What does the defense have to do here, just giving up a big touchdown last um, drive? What does their mindset have to be? I think they have to be very aggressive at this point and just gamble, you know, just bring pressure on those passing downs and – on a first and second downs, they have to stop the run. Horn is down 27-0, first and 10. Gets it over to West and Derek. This guy West, he's been balling today. Yeah, he's uses his size to defend, to shield off the corners from making any plays on the football. And he just continues to dominate. At this point, I think either you play zone or you have to double team him on the passing downs. York, back to throw, has West again. And the Hornets don't even touch him as he come off the line, Derek, and he's getting first downs every and cat pass he catches. It's, it's funny because they're just looking at him the entire time, so you know the ball is going his way. So somebody should be jumping the route, but so far they have not been able to do that. But in the Hornets' defense, at least they're not Howard. They're down 65-12 to 12 against North Carolina a t right now. So we have that going for us. And great move, good spin move there. As you see, Simmons getting it going with a big run there, keeping those feet churning and keeping those chains moving. And this just looks like a deflated Hornets defense. The offense has done nothing for them during the entire game, during the entire season, and they're just getting tired now. York hands it off to Simmons, and he has nowhere to go, and great job there by the Hornets defense. Good job by Barrett off the right end there. Actually, the linebacker, good job off the right side wrapping up Simmons and bringing him down. Well, 
Second and 10, ball to 35, 10 27 remaining. On his trail, 27 0. York fakes it. He's going to get nearly sacked, but does throw it away. It was he outside the tackle box? Is they're going to meet up in the side. They're going to say the receiver and West was in the area. But and York like looks York. hurt. Yeah, yeah, York in a real slow. But they do have two pretty good quarterbacks. Good pressure by Sherrod, though. They didn't, bring, they didn't blitz anybody extra, but Sherrod just beat his man off the end there and was able to bring York down, forcing the throw away. Third and 10, Hornets need to stop here. Call out drives back to throw. Throws it short to West, but looks like it is going to be incomplete. And the uh, refs do confer that. They continue to just look to West. And like you said, they're not pressing him off the line. They're really just backing up 10 yards. West runs a nine-yard route and makes a catch. Well, Hornets do make a stop there. That's like South Carolina State will punt. So Hornets defense making something out of nothing. Yeah, good job there. Um, able to generate some pressure and stop the bleeding there because the Bulldogs were marching down the field again. Golson is back deep. He'll let it bounce and it'll be a great punt there. And that'll be down at about the two yard line. And you talk about your job as a punter. Do your job. <laughs> and Jerome Petaway did his job there. Yeah, and great job by the coverage team as well getting to that football to down it. And this, of course, will be the worst field position of, of the day for the Hornets. And they're turnover prone, so it's not a good situation. They have to go pretty much 98 yards to put points on the board. Yeah. You really can't trust the kicking game, and you need touchdowns at this point. Exactly. If they go a three and out and have to punt it, that's a dangerous, dangerous situation. So at least get one first down if you're the Hornets. And the Bulldogs haven't taken their foot off the gas or the pressure off the neck of the Hornets. They've been staying in the no huddle, up tempo offense, throwing the football, and definitely looking to add more points to the board. Yeah, definitely. This is a team that's continuing to just make statements. They're not taking their foot off the gas. They beat Howard 49 to 10 last week. So you know they're not going to have any mercy towards Delaware State. <laughs> Well, Rivera in the offense and the shadow of their own goal post in their own end zone. Last thing the Hornets want to do is move back here because you don't have much space to go without getting a safety. Rivera comes on the out formation. He'll just quarterback sneak it, and he barely maybe got a yard there. Yeah, just trying to get some type of space. I understand that play call there. So it'll be second and nine and three. Hornets down 27 to zero with 940 remaining here in the third quarter. Rivera will come out in, looks like the gun here. He's in his own end zone. Not much room to operate. Rivera takes the snap, he's gonna throw it. Has a man underneath, it's complete. The Hornets a little bit of space there. That pass is complete to Kamal Abrams. So a little bit of a positive play there by the Hornets. Yeah, good job getting the ball out quickly because if there's a holding in their end zone, that's a safety as well. So give your lineman a chance. Just get the ball out as quick as possible before a penalty can happen. Great point there. Rivera quickly back to the line. It's going to go to Allen. Allen runs right. We've said that a lot today, and he has no running room, and we've said that a lot. This line of South Carolina State, you got to give them credit. Yeah, this is the best defense in the MEAC, and you can see why. No gain on the play. Ball was dead at the 12-yard line. And as an offense known as the Horn says, they predicated on the run game. When they don't have a run game, they're one-dimensional. We see the turnovers. Exactly, and that's what's why we say they have to establish the run because you know how Rivera is turnover prone, but they have not been able to get the running game going at all. Looks like they on Chung on the carry. He'll get a gain of about two and set up a third down and six. What do you do here, Derek? Third and six, you need to get a first down. I think so far Scott has done a good job winning his matchups on the outside, and they're going to get another one-on-one -on -one situation. Scott just has to win off this 
press and he can get an open look. He had Rivera it. with no time throws it, didn't want to get hit, and Scott really was the only option, as you said, and nothing there. And looks like the Hornets will be punting again, Derek. And, and Hamilton's doing a good job. They're playing press coverage one on one, and he's not allowing Scott to get a clean break off the line. And he cut that slant route off, and Rivera really had no choice but to throw the ball away. Kind of one why the Hornets haven't put a little bit of pressure on West, the other receiver who has been torching them most of the day, like we said. But it's like the Hornets will punt again, and last thing they want is a miscue here because it could lead to more points for the Bulldogs. They almost got a piece of it. And that will take a little bit of a bounce. Depends on the spot. Looks like they'll spot it close to the 50 at about the 48. At least for the Hornets' sake, no turnovers. The punt didn't get blocked. Got to look for the positives. Definitely in a game like this, Derek down 27 points, and the Bulldogs had the ball nearly at midfield at the 48, and still have plenty of time remaining in this game to add to this lead. York looks fine back in the game. Going to take it and throw, so he must be feeling okay. And this man just dropped that pass as it was wide open. Jermaine Baxley I was the intended receiver, but just couldn't help the quarterback out. What do you think? A lot of teams, it seems like when the Hornets have or trailing, the team still throw against them as they're trying to add more points to the board. Well, it, it's a rivalry game. These are all MEAC opponents, so there's no love lost. So they're all trying to run a score up. But at the same time, it's just the third quarter. It's just the Hornets have been getting blown out early, but they can't stay just running the ball for a whole half. Taylor on the carry. Gains of, gain of one. Ball on the 49, second. And... Excuse me, third and nine. So the Hornets with a shot here to get off the field. Gabriel Sherrod will look to bring the pressure on the outside. York pass is intercepted. And the Hornets finally have something to cheer about, Derek. That turnover. And there he is, Derek. Tarek Colston. Tarek should have been Derek Colston. And he was just, and he looked like the receiver on that play. I don't know where York was going with the football there, but Terry Coaster Co Co was able to make a good play. Might be a little bit, a little too late, but something positive for the fans to share about. And now the Hornets have to score points here. The best time to take a shot is after a turnover. Normally the defense is a little bit, you know, a little bit uneasy, a little bit unhappy about the turnover. <laughs> Rivera in a gun, looks to help out his defense, puts the points on the board. Allen goes right. We've seen this play a lot today. And South Carolina State is knowing the playbook here, Derek. you got to stop doing these yeah, plays. It's kind of frustrating. The plays worked in the first half, but, of course, South Carolina State goes into the halftime break, and they make the adjustment. They are setting the edge now, and they're not allowing Allen to get to the outside, and they're, you're having a lot of tackles for loss. Loss of two yards on a play. Ball in the 39, backed up are the Hornets. Rivera runs left, sprints left, throws it over the head of his intended receiver. Kamal Abrams. put that pass on the money there. That was a good play call. They rolled him out away from the pressure, and he missed it. Well, third and long for the Hornets. Ball on 39, down 27-0 with six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Rivera has to make something happen here. And the offensive line looks to help him out and maybe try to protect him so he doesn't get sacked again. It is so sad. I'm looking at the sideline, actually, and you just see all the Hornets defenders putting their helmets back on already. Like, okay, I think they're going to get it back on the field soon. So we have a timeout on the field. Well, Derek, third and 12, what would your play call be? Honestly, I would just, I'm looking for Scott, but I would put him either in trips or a stack type of formation where he's not getting pressed because he has a, repeat, a receiver in front of him to protect him from getting pressed and then to see if he can make a play in the passing game. Okay. 
Rivera in the gun. Third receiver still left. Golson in the slot. Golson has been kind of quiet today. Maybe he can make a play here. For a quarterback. Rivera gets it, fakes the handoff. Scott underneath. Scott has a brigade in front of him. It's going to be a little short of the first down there. And Dirk, uh, they have to go for they it. They have to go for it there. I like the design to get some yards there, knowing that it's four down territory, get as much as you can on third down, make it a reasonable fourth down. Fourth and one, ball in the 28, six minutes remaining, Hornets down 27. Need to make a first down here to keep any hopes of points on the board alive. High snap, Rivera keeps it, throws, and that is gonna be a completed pass. Great job there by Morris Frazier. And Morris Frazier showing some ability to make plays today. And we don't really see too many of those quick passing routes, but right there, that was uh, that was some progression for, for Rivera to see him pinpoint accuracy, quick route, quick timing route, makes the completion. Hornets first and 10, ball in 15. Best drive of the day so far. Rivera gets it, steps up, shovel pass to Chong, and wow. I kind of think one of Rivera should have kept that. Yeah, he definitely should have kept that himself. He could have had Chung as his blocker to take him into the end zone. Rivera, of course, the, the point, the, the quarterback nature is to get to your player there, but might want to be a little bit more selfish in that instance there. Well, Derek, the second and 10 of the 15. Hornets with the best job of the day, as I stated, in the gun. Rivera has to make a play here. Rivera hands it off, keeps it, runs a little read option, slides, gets down, and a good play call there. Good job by Rivera, knowing that if he handed it off to his running back, it was going to be for a loss. And Rivera, he, he's a gamer. Even though he makes some turnovers, you can see that he's going to give it his all. He's going to do whatever is necessary to get some type of points. Third and short, third and three to be exact. Rivera looking to make a first down or even a touchdown. Rivera gets a snap, looks left, goes back right. He's going to throw it to the end zone. It looks like it's going to be a touchdown. It is Malik Golson on the score, and the Hornets are finally on the board. Going to get a taunting penalty probably on Golson after the touchdown pass. He just stared at the corner that was guarding him. But good job by Golson in the slot, making the catch and getting his feet in bounds. Great job there by Rivera. What a throw and find this man Golson. I say Golson has been quiet today. He must have heard me because he made a play there. And a great job there. The Hornets get on the board. Yeah, and they'll try to get a field goal. It's something like a swinging gate thing. Kind of looking kind of coldish in terms of the play that they're running at the special teams. But now they're going to just audible to the regular field goal formation. As D will try to put in the extra point. Kick is good. Hornets trail 27 to 7. But Derek, what a drive there by the Hornets to bring some life back into the stadium. Yeah, just that's what happens when they're able to string together a couple completions. Everybody's momentum comes up. And let's just look at the replay one more time. Rivera has pressure in his face. 
but makes a beautiful pass where only Golson can go get it, and there's a touchdown for him. And then there's a taunting penalty as he just stands and just stares down the corner, but a great play by both Golson and Rivera. Well, Derek, what did you like from that drive? A lot of positives in there, especially from Rivera. I just like the, the, the confidence in Rivera. His, he hasn't been very accurate. The whole offense hasn't really protected him, but he marched down the field and was able to score. And of course, like we said, each time the defense makes a play, it just sparks the offense. That whole possession was set up because of Tarek Costa making the interception. Well, defense has did its job, gets the turnover. What are you looking for here? The defense has to have some momentum, feel confident in the offense a little bit, knowing they can try to helpfully get back in this game with a pretty good amount of time, about 20 minutes in this game, remaining five minutes in this quarter, 15 in the fourth. Well, you just kick it deep and tell your defense, make us another play. There's, if they want to continue to throw the ball against us, make another play. But it does look like, once again, they're running this weird bunch formation at, for the kickoffs. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's an onside kick. I, will, I, I wouldn't want them to do an onside kick, but it's a weird formation once again. Well, let's see if they do go with the onside kick here as the South Carolina State does have a lot of guys up front ready for the onside kick. So a deep kick here could help out the Hornets, put them in a deep field position. And he's going to kick it deep. Williams gets it. Hamilton, excuse me. Hamilton on the return. Well, Derek, let's see what the <laughs> South Carolina State Bulldogs do here. We saw them keep trying to throw the ball. Kind of came back and did them last drive. Do they keep doing that here? Yeah, I think they'll probably be more conservative after that turnover, and the crowd gets into it a little bit, and then now the Hornets feel a little bit good about themselves. So we expect them to go to the ground, a lot of Simmons, and a lot of just run option type of looks. York fakes the handoff, throws it to that man named West. West with another big gain and stiff arm and three Hornets as he still is on his feet. And this guy West is putting the league on notice. Yeah, it's, he was, no matter who was guarding him, J.R. Robinson, Willie Burton, LeVar Smith, I mean LeVay Smith, it doesn't matter. He's just dominating. And it's because they're not, they're, they're about 10 yards off of him. He's running a five yard route, makes a catch, and then makes people miss. York hands it off to Simmons. Simmons hasn't had much running room all day, and he won't get much there. Yeah, the Hornets, they have a great front seven. We've talked about it with Sherrod and Harris and company. They're able to get a lot of push up front to keep running games from working. York, Simmons was right. Going to throw to his right. Simmons gets it. Has a blocker in front of him. Cuts it upfield. Runs up the middle and gets a big gain. And Simmons found something there. A little swing pass turned to a big game. They have to read these screens better, especially the line. A lot of it has to do with the defensive line. If the offensive linemen aren't blocking you at all and it just seems so easy that I'm getting to the quarterback, that means the screen is coming. They need to get their hands up or they need to start running towards where the running back is at instead of going continuing going to the quarterback. First and 10, ball in the 33, 350. York fakes the handoff, going pump fake it and go down. What a hit there by the defense. Jacob Tizzer on a sack. <laughs> And we talk about Sherrod a lot, but Tiz is another person that just pops when you watch the game. You see him making plays all over the field. It seems like we call his number at least four or five times a game. And you can see why there. That was a wrestling move type of takedown. So that sets up second down, excuse me. Second down, excuse me. And there is that man again, number 24. Guy who had the touchdown. 
Glenda part, Jameson. Part of the reason why these screens are working is because these corners are playing 10 yards back. And it's something that we can't just harp on them because it's something that the Hornets do often. But sometimes you have to make adjustments. Sometimes the team has your number and they know you play off. So sometimes you have to play press coverage to, sh to, to stop these short passes from working. Third and one, third and short for the Bulldogs. 2.40 remaining here in third quarter. York is going to keep it himself and has room to run. He fumbles. But the ball is, he's going to be ruled down. Ball was loose, but I was going to say he was down. Looked like Tarek might have ripped it up out at the last second, but the ref said he was down. Good play by Tarek, though. So it's going to be a first and 10 at the 13. York hands it off, and there's no running room there for Simmons. And once again, it's Sherrod right at the line of scrimmage. He leads the MEAC in tackles for losses, and you can see why. Just so quick, hands are so fast that he's able to get past offensive linemen with ease. So it'll set up a second and 13 at the 16. 27 to 7 is the score. We're approaching the end of the third quarter. York in the gun, face it to Simmons. York going to throw to West. West passes a little outside of his reach. And the Hornets done a good job of being a little bit more physical there. Yeah, and Robinson, he's a good corner, did a good job shadowing what West was doing. He's a big time receiver. A lot of times you don't want to press up on a guy that size, but because he's running so many underneath routes, they have to get closer. York fakes it and there he is. Gabriel Sherrod flashing through your TV screens right there. What a play there. We haven't really called him all day, but we knew it was coming eventually. Yeah, Gerard is just, he just so fast, so quick. And that might have taken him out of field goal range. We'll see if they'll go for it or not. Everybody's kind of li lining up to discuss what they're going to do. But Looks like they knew that play as well. Yeah. Good job by the defense for recognizing that. And play recognition is half of the battle. If you know what they're going to do, you can stop it. Exactly. And Sherrod is just so aggressive. You know he's always going for the quarterback anyway. So the quarterback keeps it. He's going to hit him. And we question him sometimes, like, why is he playing so wide? He's in a wide nine stance. But when you make plays like that, you get in whatever stance you want, young man. Yeah. Terrific play by him. And you talk about a converted tight end. You look at that play, Derek. He just flashed right through the screen there. And was virtually unblocked. Yeah, it basically he was, and it was a good job. And as we're looking at the stands, not a whole lot of people still in the student section, but the alumni section is still very much here representing for their Hornets. So it looks like they will attempt the field goal here. It's going to be about a 40-plus yard attempt. So it's going to be a 42-yard attempt about. And we got a timeout from the Hornets, trying to ice the kick a little bit. I hope that's not what they're doing. They're going to need all these timeouts late in the fourth, so I hope it's not trying to ice the kicker in the third quarter. I think the Hornets may try to go all out here and get a block maybe, try to block it and get something for the offense. It looked like they were trying to set up for a kick return, like if it was really short. I think they had Tarek Colston back there. And here's just a replay of just going to show you Sherrod. Just basically just overpowers him. Actually, sorry, that's not what happened. This is a different play. This is a fumble. That one kind of looked like it was out on that replay there. But of course, that was a couple plays ago, and they ruled him down. Oh, 
Oh, Dark, they do miss us here. They do have someone deep to return it. And it could be a possibility for a play. Yeah, it looks like I think it's Colston back there. For I the think return. it is Colston. So about a 42-yard attempt here from Standard. Kick is up. It's no good. Wide left. So the Hornets get a stop there, and they'll get the ball at the 25. Yeah, and I think about this time you probably are pretty much abandoning the run unless you try to catch them off guard with a draw or something. But you just got to let it be the Rivera show. Whether it's good or bad, you have to let him take the reins and see if he can cut the deficit. Oh, Rivera and the gun to have an opportunity again. Ball on the 25, down 27 to seven with 30 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Rivera gets it, looks right, he's gonna throw right, gonna take a shot deep, and that ball is almost intercepted. Tried to throw it deep there to Jeremiah Williams. Yeah, there was nothing there. They had two safeties deep. I know they want to make the big play. We are telling them to take those shots, but only when there's not two deep safeties, of course. And also, Great they got to give they got to give Rivera some time. He's getting hit basically every time he's out there. So the Hornets will try again, second and 10. Ball in the 25. Rivera throws a screen to Scott. Scott gets it. Not much space there. Look at a short game. Good job by Scott, though, navigating the sideline to get a couple of extra yards, making this a manageable third down. So it's going to be a third and five here for the Hornets with the ball on the 30 yard line. And I think that's gonna be in the third quarter. Well, Dirk into the fourth quarter, 15 minutes left. Hornets down 20. Well, that was a much better quarter than the first two. If you're just going by quarters, that, that one was tied 7-7, seven, seven, so that's that's a positive, and the offense showed some life. In, a, in the future, they're going to have to start playing better earlier, though. The offense has to start doing what they're doing now earlier. Oh, Dirk, 15 minutes remaining. Hornets down 20 points. Not impossible, but it is going to be an uphill climb. It is, and they're going to probably have to start going more with the quick drops and the three-step drops and passing to get the ball out of Rivera's hands quickly. It's something that, honestly, the Hornets in the last couple of years have not been good with for those short routes because just they get jumped a lot. But on that last drive, we've seen a couple of completions to Frazier and Golson on those short routes, and it seemed like the timing was down and was a little bit better than in the past. So that could be a way for them to generate some offense here. Well, Rivera will have the football here. With a third and five, a third and manageable, and a chance to move the chains here. Rivera has Golston in the slot. Golston did catch the only touchdown for the Hornets today. Could be an option here on his third and five. Rivera gets a snap. Going to run a little option. Chong gets it. Trying to get to the edge. He does not. He's going to be short. Deshaun Taylor on the stop. I, I just don't like running on that situation there. I just don't like it. Um, I can see if they were doing that because they're at the 50-yard line or the 40-yard line of the 
Bulldogs, and they were thinking this is four down territory, so let's get as much as we can and then pass on a fourth down. But to just run and then punt the ball, I don't, I don't like it. And it gets blocked. And just like that, another punt is blocked. The guy who blocked it might have been the guy who recovered it. Was it Tevin Richard again to get the block? If that's so, that's his second block of the game. He already has one for a touchdown, and he got another tipped one. This guy is just – he's been the MP, he's been the starter of the game in those plays. He's just splitting right between two blockers and getting a hand up. Some things you kind of want to avoid, as I said, and just like that, <laughs> another punt is blocked. And Kind of summed up the Hornets season so far. Yeah, I think we can just keep that special teams graphic up there for life. It'll be 50 years from now and we'll be like, don't touch that. <laughs> Do not touch keys to the game because we know they have to stop the special teams. Simmons on a carry, bounces off a few Hornets, reverses field. York with the block. He might get to the edge. He's going to go for the pylon, and that's going to be a touchdown. He did get the ball by. What a play there by Simmons. And, and all he can do is say, wow. Talk about a big-time play. Simmons delivered there and put the dagger in the heart of the Hornets. Yeah, and Simmons, that's his second touchdown of the day, just showing his acceleration and some agility to just cut back and forth like that. And good block by his quarterback. I think York made a block to free him up for that run. Now you see fans beginning to file out of Alumni Stadium. Kind of tough on your homecoming to see this happen. Yeah, but we knew coming in this was going to be a very, very tough game for the Hornets. They just didn't match up well with them. Knowing that you're down, you're starting quarterback, and you're going against the best pass defense in the MEAC, it's, it just doesn't really sound great. So we knew coming in this could have been uh, the outcome, and that's what happened. Oh, Derek, a play like that, as we said, is uh, definitely a game killer in a sense because it kind of limits all hope of a comeback. So what is there left that you can do as a Hornet? Um, you just have to just continue to play. This is about – we knew coming in it was going to be a rebuilding season. And to rebuild, you just have to play. You just have to continue to play and build chemistry and build a kind of a rapport of what each player can do and what their skills are and what plays work. So in the future, you can build a playbook – off of the strength of the players you have now and the players you're trying to recruit in the future. Kick is going to go a little bit short. Golson gets it. Runs upfield and there's nowhere to go. Well, Derek, Rivera and offense has the ball, and I guess it'll be a lot of throws we'll see from here on out. The Hornets try to make something of this game. They're actually going to go with the handoff. Allen gets it, cuts up field, and gets a nice gain on first down. As that'll just keep the clock moving. He's shown some nice speed and acceleration when he's had some opportunities with an impact. Harv Grove blocked. He's done a good job getting some yards. Second and four and 35. Hornets down 34 to seven. Fakes the handoff. Goes to Scott. Scott gets it. Tries to turn up field. Does Steve and Fumbles. loses the ball. But they're going to rule him down. He was nowhere near down, I think, when he fumbled. Because he was lifting in the air. But uh, lucky break for them. Unless it's just going to say, you know, uh, he, I don't know. I just he was in the air. It was the football was hit by the defender's helmet. Well, 
first down for the Hornets. They'll take it anywhere they can get it. They move the ball to the 44. Handoff's given to Allen. Allen runs up the middle and not much there. Second down and seven. Allen in motion, an empty backfield. Rivera with five receivers. Scrambles right. He's going to look like he's going to throw it. Allen, what a catch. Kept that one foot. That's all you need in college, and he definitely got it down. Yeah, terrific play by Allen. Just bailing out his quarterback by getting open. and. Rivera, he's not the, the best scrambler, but he's done some good things when he's been forced to scramble out of the pocket. Hornets move the chains there. Rivera will come with the empty set. Bulldogs, bring pressure. Gets the ball out quickly. It's caught. Guy breaks the tackle. That's going to be Jeremiah Williams on the reception. Williams with the gain of six, second and four on a 39. Rivera in his offense, keeping the tempo move. Rivera gets the snap. Scrambles, throws it to Allen. Allen is going to be tackled. What open field tackle there? Great job there by Kendrick Gathers. Yeah, and Gathers, he was a player who almost had to pick earlier. He's been doing a good job in the secondary, reading the quarterback's eyes and reacting. But the Hornets are doing a quick passing to protect Rivers, I'm sorry, R Rivera, and it's working a little bit. Rivera on a pistol, Allen behind him. <laughs> Rivera in the pistol, takes a snap, looks to his left, pumps, throws it. Has a man as Golson. Golson gets to about the 30. And There's the flag. It's knocked late. out. Late hit probably will be coming. And to, to, for a reminder for everybody, Golson was probably the best slot receiver his freshman year. Unfortunately for him, it's been two couple different quarterbacks in and out of the system, and he hasn't really developed much chemistry with the other quarterbacks. But when it was him and Murphy – and he has also had Milton Williams on the outside. It, this was an explosive Hornets offense just a couple years ago. They're going to take the flag back. So no late hit because he was the tackle was being initiated while Golson was still in bounds. Well, it would be a first down for the Hornets as they put the ball to 30-yard line, 7.54 remaining. Rivera with Allen behind him, takes a snap, looks. Throws it to the middle. Golson, what a catch as he got rocked on that play by Davius Chestnut. You talked about a great ability in the slot. You saw it there. Yeah, he, he was the best couple years ago. It was a, a, all, of, all me I can mention. And Rivera, that's one of the first times he's had a clean pocket where he could step in and make the throw. And something that they should do in the future is they don't need all five receivers going out. They need to have three or four going out and have a couple extra blockers in to help this offensive line. Rivera drops, throws, tried to get it to Golson on the play. We saw similar on a touchdown, but they got to get Golson involved, and I like what they're doing this drive. I do like they got it involved there. It was good coverage, and Rivera just threw the ball where either Golson was going to catch it or nobody was. Not a poor decision there. Second down and nine, uh, nine here. Second and goal, excuse me, at the nine.
Rivera in a gun, three receivers to his right. Man in motion, Rivera with the pressure coming. Has a man, and he just missed him completely. That's a situation was, where he just let him too far. When a receiver is that wide open, just hit him. He had him, had Morris Frazier wide open for a touchdown. And, and this has to be four down territory, don't you agree? Yeah, so they, he still got to go for it. but So basically get some yards on third down and go for it on fourth is basically what you're mentioning. Don't have to go for the touchdown, but like you said, get some yards. Yeah, and I think maybe that pass he missed early in the game when I said he needed to put more air on it. Then he overcompensates, puts too much air on it. So unfortunate for him. Rivera gets the snap, looks to his right, steps up in the pocket. Nowhere to go. Going to try to scramble, and he's going to go down again. Reggie Owens on a stop. He'll get credit for that set. And just nowhere to go with the ball. And that's part of the downfall when you do those quick three-step drops or when you're just in the shotgun running quick routes is when they get cut off. Then it's like, okay, where do I go with the football? And by the time you make that decision, it's a little too late. So fourth down, this is pretty much close to the ball game here. 34-7, to seven. they need a touchdown here for any hope. Ball at the 12. High snap, Rivera gets it, steps up. Nowhere to go. He's going to go down, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. Actually, they're going to rule him down. They're going to rule that a sack, ladies and gentlemen. They said the knee was down, so turnover on downs. Yeah, and the offensive line has just been getting whooped this game. They've gotten destroyed the entire game from a multiple of players. Just so many different linemen have had their way with this Hornets offensive line. And it's unfortunate for Rivera to be the backup quarterback. And each time you call, them, call a hike, you have two people in your face and you have to step up or you have to run to the left or the right. Carter, Coach Carter is going to have to figure out what he's going to do with the offensive line going into next season. Well, 34-7. That was pretty much the last shot for the Hornets. Let's see if South Carolina State tries to run out the clock there. Starting to see more and more of the crowd vacate as the Hornets are huddled up defensively discussing what they're going to do next. The defense, once again, they've played very well. The score might not indicate it. You see 34 points, and you're saying the defense just wasn't doing anything, but they've been on the field a long time. They've been in very dire situations and trying to defend from their own 30-yard line after a turnover. And basically, if you watch any Hornets games, you know it wasn't on the defense. It's on the special teams and the offense let them down again. Well, Derek, as you said, South Carolina State will get the ball here. And the road ahead for them, it will be interesting because they have a shot in a few weeks to play some teams that are right there in the thick of things in the MEAC, and they have a chance possibly – as uh, we'll see Collard come back in and hand it off for a short game to Brown. Uh, next week we still have some big games coming up and have a shot to definitely take control of the Miet. Yeah, South Carolina State, they basically they had the two games that they needed after the Bethune-Cookman loss. They lose a, a heartbreaking game to Bethune-Cookman, 14-17, to but then they play a, a lowly Howard team, and then Delaware State, of course, who is winless as well. And unfortunately for the Hornets, they've had a tough schedule remaining. York is going to go down and just throw it away unwisely, but actually completes it, but not for much. You would thought that they would have called him down due to forward progress being stopped. He was being carried backwards by Anderson, but somehow got the ball out. Quan Caldwell on a reception. Uh, third and eight, ball to 20. We're at 8.30 remaining here in the regulation. York drops back to throw, throws it, and that pass is going to be, looks like, completed. I don't know the number, but I'm just going to say it was West. Even no, it wasn't it was West. 24. <laughs> it was Leonard Jamison, but <laughs> what a play there. Yeah, that was a good catch. The dangerous pass. Uh, out route towards the sideline, and everybody's double teaming him, and he still makes the catch. But just to go back about the schedule we were talking about, it doesn't get any easier. The Hornets have to go on the road. I'm sorry, the Hornets play Bethune-Cookman. They come here, but Bethune-Cookman, of course, always very good. And then after that, they have to play NC Central on the road. And then North Carolina a t who's ranked 24th in the nation. And it, it, if they're going to get a win, it's probably game, last game of the season against Howard. York swing pass again, and it is no good. Incomplete play we saw to go to 
Uh, a few plays ago, go to Simmons on a big game. Intended for Freeman on a play. And it'll set up second and 10 on a 33. I have a question for you, Byron. Do you think this team gets a win this season? Uh, I mean, as you said, it comes down to schedule-wise, it's been very tough. They got Bethune-Cookman next week. Then you go to North Carolina for two straight weeks. Those are going to be three tough weeks where you find a lot of, about this team that you may not know already know is passed and complete by York. So I have to say that our game. Both teams could be winless at that point. And you look at it and say that that game is going to be a battle of pride, two teams. And I think the last two times Howard and Gishio has played has come down to the wire. I remember the last game that was here at the Lemonade Stadium was an overtime thriller. Hornets pulled out. So yeah. I have to say. There's still a chance. Yeah, I think that was was that the game with the onside kick a couple years I ago, believe I believe. So. I remember I think Milton Williams recovered the onside kick and they were able to march down the field and score with no time remaining. So the Hornets still have to play this season. It's not over yet. You want to definitely try to get something going and York throws and that pass is just dropped. That's in it for Leonard Jameson. And actually it looks like we have some altercation going on on the field here. Yeah, and if you're the Hornets, just saying, why are you continuing to throw the ball on every single down? You know, sometimes you're going to pass the ball even though you're up. But it's 34-7, and they threw three straight passes. The Hornets probably don't like that too much. They want to get out of here as much as anybody else right now. Definitely, you kind of want to see the clock keep moving, not stop. Punt is a booming kick to Golson, and it's going to take a bulldog bounce. And Golson may not want to touch that one, as it'll roll all the way to the 15 and maybe even close to the 14. Well, Derek down 34 to 7. Uh, we talked a little about a blowout that was going on down in uh, North Carolina. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, North Carolina A&T was just beating uh, Howard. The last time we got the update, it was 65 to 12. And that's a team that's going, we're going to be facing in a couple of weeks. So I'm not going to crack any jokes because that could very well be what happens to the Hornets. Um, but yeah, Howard, that's the team that Delaware State has a circle on their schedule. And they said, if we get anyone, if we could get one win, it has to be against Howard. Because we blew our opportunity against Florida a and who was winless before. And this is the last winless team we got. Good point there. And North Carolina a and ranked 24th, has some good pieces. And they could be one of the representatives in that celebration bowl. Exactly. So it's, it's definitely a fight up in the top of the four. So there's basically the Hornets aren't going to walk into a matchup and catch any teams by surprise this late in the season because there's so much on the line. Ball to 14 for the Hornets. Rivera on the offense. Not much time left. Rivera runs right. Does a little shovel pass to Allen. Allen gets up field. Gain of about five on a play. And a Allen, creative play there. He's extremely quick. It seems like he's a shoestring tackle away from a touchdown almost every time he gets the ball. It's, he's getting tackled at the very last second. Kind of would like to see Jackson and Allen play a little bit more together, maybe in the backfield. Use a little motion off of each other. Maybe just some creativity. Keep the defense honest. Rivera gets it, goes to Allen. Allen is going to be hit and upended, and they'll rule him down. Big hit on a the play there by number 27, Marquise Jones, coming up and making an open, open field tackle. Yeah, and that could have been much worse if Jones was there a little bit earlier. Allen was able to at least turn up field a little bit to protect himself, but uh, Rivera has to be careful when he throws those type of passes. That could have been a huge hit. Third of five and a 19, Hornets trail 34 to seven, 650 remaining. Rivera gets the snap, throws it, and that was knocked away. Looks like it was knocked away by number 93, James Robinson. Well, Derek, this defensive line does a lot of things well for the Bulldogs. Talk a little bit about it. Well, yeah, like we said, we, it all starts with Harv Grove up the middle. But then because you're putting so much attention on him, everybody else kind of gets their one-on-one -on -one matchups and against lesser linemen, and they're able to make plays as well. 
This whole defense is great. You got to give them credit. Yeah. Defensive front, defensive secondary, and we, linebackers. Yeah, we, we haven't even mentioned the secondary, but they led the they lead the MEAC in interceptions, and they also have three interceptions for touchdowns this season already. So all around, that defense all around is very good against the run, against the pass. That's what carries this team. Well, South Carolina State will get the ball. Dark, Coach Carton and his home team will have another hard, long week after a tough, disappointing blowout loss. What do you tell your team here? They have to keep fighting with plenty of games left. Yeah, they have to continue to fight hard, and especially just to send the seniors out with some fond memories later on down the line, just to remember a couple games that started to turn around. You want these seniors to continue to believe that if they can win a couple games, that they can turn this Hornets team around, and it can because, be because they started turning it around this season. So want to continue to fight hard because the program will turn back around. It just needs some stability on that offensive line, and they have to find out who's their quarterback for the future. If Obato can't be healthy, then maybe you give the reins to Rivera during training camp and, you know, spring camp and see if he can develop as your guy because Obato, as talented as he can be, just continues to get injured. Tail on a carry, short game, cutlock throws, and incomplete. So that will stop the clock. And as you see, Turf Carolina State not giving up yet. Yeah, South Carolina State is looking around like, where's the flag? Like, three Hornets jumped off sides, and we thought we had a free play. Kind of think the refs want to go enjoy some of that cookout food as well. Yeah, it's just everybody doesn't really want to be here anymore. You see a lot of people walking out. But if you're South Carolina State, if you're a South Carolina State fan, you're definitely staying for this because they, it's been a dominating performance. Second week in a row, they've blown out their opponent. Kulak escapes the sack, finds his man, and he's going to go upfield. Justin Taylor on the reception. Kulak with a little magic right there. So fourth on one, looks like South Carolina State may keep their offense on the field here. Finally, they're putting their punt team out there, and there's been a lot of possessions in the fourth quarter, but they just will not run this clock out. They're making sure everybody has to suffer through it during their homecoming. And you know the Hornets are going to remember this. If they could do anything about it a couple years from now, hopefully they can. But right now they're just powerless to stop anything North Carolina, I'm sorry, anything South Carolina State can do. Hornets are going to go all out trying to block this punt. You know, just take a delay a game here. South Carolina State will punt. Hornets trying to block this punt. No success there. Golson will fair catch it.
Rivera on the offense has another shot. Hands it off. And that's Allen running to the right and tries to get a few yards there. Clock keeps moving. So a six yard gain on the play, second and four for the Hornet offense. Allen again on the carry. So Bryson Allen has seen his touches today. Yeah, and he's responded well. He's normally just kind of like the spell back, and he just kind of, whenever Jackson needs a break, comes in. But he's responded to the heavier workload, and it's been effective. Third and one, Allen will get it again, and he'll try to turn it. He looks like, depending on the slot, he did get it. They're going to signal a first down. Rivera looking to the sideline. Rivera gets the snap, throws it to Scott, and it's knocked away. Rivera tries to keep it. He does. Turns up field. Actually gets some yardage. Yeah, we're trying to do that little shuffle pass, and they just knocked over the running back. So Rivera just had to run it himself. Three twenty remaining in regulation here. Three twenty remaining. Ball on 37 for a third down and six. 3.15 remaining. Fourth quarter. Rivera empty set in the gun. Taking the shot. Does and it's going to be intercepted. And that will do it ladies and gentlemen. They move forward on the interception. If South Carolina State shows any mercy they'll run the clock out here. Well, that's kind of the only thing they were missing <laughs> defensively was an interception. Yeah, they, they, that was the one thing. And they got it. Yep, they got they got the block punts. They got the fumble. That's less basically like hitting batting the cycle for a defense. Definitely showing their abilities as a defense, <laughs> getting sacks, stopping people in the backfield. Yeah, and just an instant replay. The ball gets tipped. Rivera once again gets hit and is picked off. Lock hands it off. Taylor gets it in. They're gonna just run the ball. Looks like Derek try to run some time off this clock and drive back down 95 with the win. 250 remaining. South Carolina State taking their time. Clock, empty set. Nate just looking, running himself, take time off the clock. And look at that, ladies and gentlemen, the Hornets. And they cause a fumble. Tarek Coulson forced it. It's a fumble. Andre Brown was running and looked like he had it. A shot for a wide open. And Tara Coulson, he's a guy who just continues to make plays. He's He has always been a bright spot for the Hornets team, no matter what the score is. He's always there trying to make a play. Good job by him forcing the fumble.
And there's some of the alumni still here enjoying the game. We've got Tara Colston pictures up in the stands. Great play there to Golson. A little too little too late though. Yeah, but this is something that you hope can be something that happens in the future is that they haven't really looked for Golson that much this season. So maybe this develops that chemistry that's been needing for him to be successful. As you said, Derek, maybe they can build some momentum heading into the final few weeks of the season. Rivera gets it, throws it. Has a guy, and that's going to be Ortiz on the reception. And that's going to be a great catch there. And uh, opportunity, as we see. Hornets picking up tempo here. With 125 remaining. Rivera deep. Throws it. Ball knocked away. At the last second, it looked like Davion Tooks was able to get a hand in. And Jeremiah Williams still had a shot, but good timing by Tooks to get his hand in and rip it away. Rivera scrambles right, looking for something, throws it, throws it to Scott. What a play there. Scott, get both feet down. Well, Rivera's rolled out the pocket. He's made some good passes. I think that's something that they need to work on more is getting Rivera or Obato out of the pocket because both those quarterbacks, when they roll out and they extend time for these receivers to get open, it works. I don't know what their scramble drill is, but it works really well. Definitely shown some mobility, things we haven't seen from Rivera. Doing a good job there. Great play there, throwing to Frazier. Frazier with the short game. More Frazier with this third reception of the day. Gain of five for Frazier. 48 seconds remaining. Here's a replay. The plays just happened. Rivera, the throw was knocked away. Knocked away by Pauling. Well, 30 seconds remaining, Derek. Game's pretty much over. Third and five. Rivera steps up, throws it to Scott. Scott couldn't hold on to it. Difficult play for Scott. He was open, and he made him have to come back forward and dive and try to keep both feet in bounds and still make the catch. But could have been a lot easier than all of that. Oh, Dirk, this is pretty much the game, even though the game has been over. But 27 seconds remaining. And there's a shot at the screen. This is a cool look. Rivera throws back shoulder, it. no good. Back shoulder pass and complete like you just mentioned. But I like kind of that shot right there we have on the scoreboard and showing where the plays. And okay, of course, the second I like it, they move away from it because they're not cool with me. So I, that's, that's, I, I guess that's cool. Oh, that'll pretty much do it. One nil away, and this game will be pretty much over. I'm going to find out who that cameraman was because I was enjoying looking at the screen there, and they just going to move the camera like I wasn't talking about it. That's cool. Bulldogs will come on to victory formation and drive home with the happy win as the road ahead looks for them. Looks pretty promising as they have shot this MEAC title and that birth in the celebration bowl. <laughs> I 
And uh, Bulldogs come out in the victory formation in Derek. Tough loss here for the Hornets. Another loss. Last win was there's Norfolk State last year at their homecoming. And overtime, 13-10. Yeah. to 10. What do they have to do here? Yeah, it's just been, well, they got to, you know, find what their identity is. Are they they're going to be a ground-and-pound team? Are they going to be a quick pass team, a team that takes their shots deep? What are they on the offensive side of the football? Because it seems like they just, okay, that play doesn't work. We're just going to do something completely different. Okay, that strategy didn't work. We're going to do another thing completely different. They need to figure out what their identity is and play the players that fit that perfectly. If they can't do that, then they're just going to continue to lose. Oh, great point there, Derek. They have a tough road ahead. Next week, they're back here at home against Bethune-Cookman. Of course, we will have the call and have the broadcast, Derek. Heading into this game, what do they have to do to try to find some sort of momentum and get a win? Well, I mean, one thing is no matter what type of identity you have, if you don't have the offensive line, it's not going to get done. So they're going to have to find out do they have to move some guys around on that offensive line because this is the offensive line that's been together for three years. It's the same group of guys. A whole bunch of freshmen two years ago, so that was their excuse. But now they're juniors, and – Still a lot of mistakes being made. Well, Derek, once again, thanks great being alongside you. The rest of the crew, great job today. Uh, it's homecoming here, but not the best or brightest homecoming game. Hornets lose 34-7 to to South Carolina State. Hornets looking for their first win. They'll try to get it again next week. As we said, we'll have the call against Bethune Cookman uh, for Derek Slade and the rest of the crew. My name is Byron Dixon. Have a great night. Thank you for watching.